Greetings, Rory Wanderer, and welcome back to Lonely TTRPG, the solo actual play and review podcast. And this week, we are celebrating episode 50 of Lonely TTRPG. That's right, we've been coming at you for over a year and now 50 episodes. So, before we get started, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to everybody who's been on this solo journey with us so far. Really bringing home the point that, you know, just because you're playing alone doesn't mean you need to be alone. And of course, I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons, Catherine and Max, who have been with me for quite a while now. You guys have been superstars. Thank you so much for your support and making this just a little less on me as far as everything is concerned. So a huge thank you to all of that. But this week we are playing O Captain by Leon Barriaro. In Old Captain, you play a captain wandering the sea with nothing but the stars to guide you. The dice you roll represent those stars as well as your resources, obstacles, and hard-won experience. This game is about adventure, survival, longing, and resource management. The object is to accomplish as much as you can and tell a good story. What you're accomplishing and what story you're telling, however, is up to you and the stars. The only setting rule is that you're at sea. You can establish the setting beforehand or build it as you go. You can have magic, gods, supernatural beings, and otherworldly forces, or nothing but the harsh mistress of the waves. This game is inspired by stories such as Sunless Sea, The Odyssey, and The Rime of the Ancient Mariner. Consider drawing inspiration from your favorite sea stories to help you chart your story. And of course, immediately looking at this book, one thing that I noticed besides how beautiful it is, is just how many names I'm starting to recognize after being in this space as long as I have doing this work. Like the editor being Sadie Lowry. They are good people. And definitely if you're making a game and you can afford an editor, give them a look. Also going all the way to the back at some of these backers. An impressive list of backers, which is giving a lot of good feelings for how this game is actually going to be. Like Jeff Stormer from... Party of One, another great podcast highlighting some wonderful games. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive on in. This is a story-focused journaling game. Traditionally, these are played solo. However, the designers, Scott and Leon, did find some joy playing together, bouncing ideas off of each other. So by all means, if you do want to play this with a friend, play with a friend. As they say multiple times in this rulebook, this is a game, not a cop. Do what you want. In O Captain, your character is the captain of a ship and everything that happens to them, how they respond and how it shakes out. You control your character, the ship, friends and enemies, every part of the story. The rules are going to tell you what parts you're responsible for and what parts the dice are responsible for. You're going to go through this answering prompts determined by the dice that you roll. There's going to initiate events and provide questions to help you flesh it out. And remember, even if something bad happens, it is up to you to find meaning in that and fit it into your story. So beginning the game, every captain's going to need three things, a name, a ship, and a reason. The name is going to be what your name is. Who is your captain? Then you're going to choose one of the types of ships, which will help determine some of the things you have to start out. And you have standard, downsized, massive, nefarious, or prestige. And of course, because I cannot resist one of these standard ship types is a schooner. Some of you might see a sailboat, but it's okay because a schooner is a sailboat. And if you do recognize that reference, please go ahead and let me know. You do have your captain's log, which is going to be that journal you're keeping. So everything that happens, make sure you note it in your log. Now, the way this game is going to play, all right? You are going to have a pool of dice. This is how many stars you have. And you're going to roll that pool of dice and try to build either a cluster or a constellation with it. You're going to interpret your constellation or cluster, respond to the prompts, and mark the resulting effects. And then you are going to continue until you either complete your journey, your captain dies, or you have decide that you've had enough of this seafaring life. 
Now, clusters are going to be your smaller events. Your larger story events are going to be your constellations. You do not need to declare what you were looking for before you roll. However, when you roll, you do need to make one of those. So, you don't need to decide, hey, for this roll, I'm trying for a constellation. You just roll your pool of dice, but you do have to make a cluster or constellation. For your dice pool, you have your stars, which are going to be D6s. Setbacks will be D4s, assets will be D8s, and titles will be D10. Stars are your standard dice. Those are going to be your most common dice. Setbacks are going to be things that you acquire throughout the game. Now, setbacks have two functions. One, you subtract it from your total, which is going to affect your prompt. Two, you do have a setback threshold that starts at eight. So, at any time, you can roll some setbacks. But, if you decide not to roll setbacks and your setback threshold ever goes above eight or above whatever your threshold is at that time, because your threshold can go down, then you become lost at sea. Assets are additions you can make to your dice roll. And these are going to be things you gain along the way as well. So setbacks you subtract, assets you add. Titles you get for completing constellations. And again, you can roll those at any time that you want as well. But you can only do those once per voyage. So setbacks and assets, once you roll those, they're gone until you earn new ones. Titles, you keep your title. However, you can only use it once per voyage. Now, once per voyage means anytime you complete a constellation. So, anytime you have finished all four parts of a constellation, then you may reuse any titles that you've gained. In addition to the new title you get for completing that constellation. Now, building those constellations and clusters, again, you're going to roll your dice and you're going to look at your stars and you're going to see if they line up to be generally the shape of a cluster or constellation. Now, if not, if they do not line up perfectly, you are allowed to move a dice into position. So when you move a star, you shift the value of that die down. The number you shift down increases by one each time you move a star within the pool to a minimum value of one. So, for example, you roll four stars. You do not get a good cluster with them, but you can shift one star into position. Then that star's value will go down by one for the total. So, let's say that was a five you would shift it into the correct spot and it now becomes a four. Now, you do want to be careful when doing this. You don't want to do this all willy-nilly because this does make the value of that constellation or cluster fall, which is going to affect what prompts you get. Generally, the lower the value, the worse it is for you. The more likely you are to pick up setbacks and issues that you're going to have to solve along the way. Now, for your totals, you're going to take all the stars in your cluster or constellation and you're going to add them together. You're going to subtract the value of any setbacks you rolled, and you're going to add the value of any assets you rolled. And that will determine your total, at which point you will refer to the tables and see what value you got. Now, for your constellations, your constellations, like I said, are going to come in multiple parts. They're in four parts. An Act 1, an Act 2, an Act 3, and a Finale. For Acts 1 through 3, it's going to work just like any other aspect of the game. For the finale, once you're ready to roll that finale, you're going to make your finale roll. And your finale roll pool is made up of any setbacks you still have, any assets or titles you choose to use, and you may roll a star, but you're going to lose that star in the process. Then you're going to check against the finale table and respond to the prompt. But that's about it for the explanation. The rest of the book has some very lovely star charts, descriptions of all the stuff, stuff that we will see as we get into the gameplay, which we're going to get into right now. So first and foremost, we need to decide what type of ship that we have. And as there are five ships, actually, 
we're only going to roll a D4. We will say that we cannot have a prestige class ship. Just yet. After all, this is our first time. So rolling a 1D4. And we got three massive. We got ourselves a massive ship. Which is nice. That gives us eight stars to start out with. But we are starting out with three setbacks, but two assets. Now, the one thing that the rules were not quite clear about was if once you get a constellation, you're kind of locked into it or not. So we are going to just say that we are. So we're just going to roll until we find a constellation. And then that will be the voyage that we're on as we try to close out that constellation. That seems like it would make the most sense for a narrative journey. So right up front, we get to roll ourselves 8d6. And as this is our first roll, we're really just kind of setting our journey and whatnot. You know what? We'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and toss in one setback. Just to clear it out. So we're gonna roll 8d6 and 1d4 just to get rid of a just to get rid of a setback. Now this is where it gets fun. Because I'm worried that the moment I touch something on my screen, my dice are gonna go away. So now we need to figure out what we might have. All right, and right up front, right up front, I can either I can either do a cluster because clusters are fairly easy to get. Or we can have our first constellation. But to get our constellation, we are going to have to modify this a little bit. I can pull the Siren constellation by moving two of my dice. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move two of my dice. I'm going to, so that's going to take three points away from my total. But we are going to get the siren. And the siren, seven stars, a figure rising from the water and singing to a downturned face. In a haze of hate, I sailed for countless nights and ne'er did wisdom ever guide my sights. Until at last I looked and shook to see, it was the devil taking hold of me. The siren is a thonic deity in many cultures, said to be responsible for a wide range of natural disasters, disappearances, and possessions. Her song, heard bubbling up from the deepest parts of unplumbed oceans, is story to be simultaneously beautiful, horrible, and hypnotic to those who encounter it. Those who may find themselves influenced by her constellation are beset by otherworldly temptations, terrifying enchantments, and nefarious tricks that only the stalwart and clever can withstand. What sort of ensorcelment falls upon our ship? Who is doing this and why have they targeted us? And were you able to resist it more than the rest of the crew? So act one, fascination. And we need to see what we rolled in order to determine what our prompt is. So we have to add up everything that was in our constellation and subtract our setback. So our constellation had one plus two plus three plus two, plus four, plus four, plus three. So one and two is three, plus three is six, plus four is 10, 14, 16, 19. Minus three is 16. All right, so for a 16, the spell enraptures the crew and only your sharpest orders are given a single care. What is the focus of their fascination why do you wonder if they are happier this way? Lose one star and gain a setback and lose a setback or gain a resistance. Okay. All right. So I'm going to gain a setback. So my setbacks are going to stay at three. My stars are going to go down to seven because I lost a star. Now I have the option of losing a setback or gaining a resistance. I'm going to take the resistance. Reason being the resistance is going to help out in my finale. As for why we are ensorcelled, seems to be the damnedest thing. I don't even know what this accent is, so I apologize for that. We're not going to go with that tonight. I'm sorry, I'm just getting over something. You might have been able to tell by my voice. Apparently, my accents went with it, which is a joke. Apparently, I was never good at accents. You can ask my players in my home group. All I could do was Southern. But I am on a massive ship. I'm... I did not have this ship. This is not my ship. We found this. Don't ask me where we found it. Apparently, where we found it 
whoever left it there was expecting it to be there when they came back. They don't seem to be all too pleased that their ship was not there. This is the only thing that I can think of that would make my crew want to ignore me so well. And so there must be there must be something in the water, there must be something on the waves, there must be something in the wind. It might even be within the very boards itself. But something about this ship where it's at is making my crew want to turn around, which is an expert anti-theft device, if you ask me. Like, I tip my hat to them if I wasn't so annoyed about the fact that it's really making my job harder. You know, so I respect what they did, but at the same time, I am angered that they've done it to me, and this cannot stand. So now we must embark on some type of mission in order to find our way out of this. And hopefully we find the siren again, which is not looking good for the home team because we are down to seven stars. So we're probably going to be bouncing around some clusters as we figure this out. It's a rough looking cluster. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and use one of my setbacks. Let's just go ahead and burn these up early. Okay, so let's see what we rolled here. This is a bit of a rough roll, but it does look like we have the knife. We can make the knife out of three fives, which is great for us. We don't have to move anything. That gives us three fives for 15 minus one for 14. So the knife is always visible in the sky, a three-sided constellation that reminds those at sea of ever-present conflict. While trouble cannot always be avoided, what truly matters is how one responds to it. And again, we got a 14, so your crew unites over a bit of good-natured mischief. What was it, and how does it affect your crew going forward? Gain two stars and an asset. So, I think... But a good-natured mischief, huh? I think what we're going to do is we're going to have my first mate, who was one of the first ones I was able to shake out of this ensorcelment, run around and run around and start pretending that the ship is haunted. And it's not really to try and scare anybody, but to show everybody how silly they're acting. Because, you know, sailors are a notoriously, notoriously superstitious lot. And, you know, they're over here, they're... They've been ensorcelled. They're going in and out. They're getting very superstitious about it. And we're going to have the first mate run around and pretend that, ooh, ghost over here. Ooh, enchantment over there. See, you're being a bunch of silly pants. All right. I need you to take off your silly pants. I need you to put on your pirate pants. And let's get back to work. All right. We got some seas to sail. And everybody's going to have kind of a laugh over, uh, over what silly geeses they've been. And we will continue on our merry little journey. And that'll bring our stars up to nine and take our setbacks down to two. And it'll bring our assets up to three, which are all very good things. But unfortunately, it is getting late for me. Like I said, I have not been feeling great this weekend, uh, which means that I'm recording this, well, as late as I usually do. But that wasn't the plan which means everything got all jacked up. So I apologize for that. So we're going to cut the gameplay short here because you've gotten to see the basic gist of everything. But the rest of the game is going to continue on just like that. You are going to roll. You are going to check your rolls against the table and you're going to write down your prompts. And this seems like a very fun take on that. Doing it all with the sea life is great. Giving you a real good chance to do that whole yo-ho pirate's life whatever you would like for that the prompts are great the artwork is beautiful i wish there were some more clusters in this however i do have an early play version the creators actually reached out to me in october to check out this game and because of scheduling conflicts moves mental breakdowns and all of that all on my end of course I had not got around to it. And then I was getting ready to, I was trying to clear out some of my backlog and was like, Hey, you know, is this still going on? And they're like, yeah, we just finished crowdsourcing. It's up on itch now, or we're getting ready to go up on itch now. 
and please still check it out. So again, I am checking out the earlier versions of this. So the press release and everything said that the crowdfunding was going to include more clusters, was going to link clusters to constellations, which is something I think would be very nice. The rules do kind of allude to the fact that you find clusters for the constellations to build it. I don't know if that means that like act one, you're actually looking for a piece of the constellation or not. But like I was definitely playing it as I have to find that constellation four times which is also like can also be a fun way to play it if i'm wrong by all means i'm willing to admit that but i also think that is also an interesting way to play it and you know that really that really highlights that searching aspect but if you're only doing one constellation at a time and you have to find the whole constellation in order to progress that story arc you need more to do in between that than the four clusters that they have. So I would definitely like to see some more clusters. I would like to see some more things that you could do within that. But otherwise, I think that this, I think that this is a great game. This definitely has a lot of a lot of seafaring potential. If you've ever wanted to do some type of sea voyage, some type of thing that actually focuses on being at sea. Because a lot of sea games don't necessarily focus with the sea aspect of it. The sea is just basically a means to an end. Like Nexal, I love Nexalis. Beautiful game. Absolutely love it. Your time on the ocean there is very much getting from one island to the next. Here, you are on the ocean. You are sailing around, you are looking for these stars, you are trying to track these constellations, and all of this is happening at sea. And I think that's a very strong thing that this game has going, and it does make it very unique to a lot of the more pirate games or a lot of the more seafaring games that you would run across. So definitely go check this out. It is up on itch right now. You can find it at barryleon.itch.io slash o-captain or by all means check out the links down below as is the case now if you're looking for any of my if you're looking for my thoughts written out or you're looking for any other ways to find this or support this game or this podcast go check out the website www.blackdragondungeoncompany.com we have links for all of our games you can go check those out I do believe that buried in there somewhere is our Patreon link. You can find us at Patreon at patreon.com slash Black Dragon Dungeon Company if you want to support us that way. Thank you for hanging out for 50 episodes. I hope to get another 50 before we really start getting bored of this. But as long as I keep getting sent great games like Oh Captain, I may have to keep going for a long, long time. And I got to tell you, there are worse problems to have. So I've been Steel Stash. If you get this, tell them I sent you. And remember, I must ask y'all to stay awesome. This has been a Black Dragon Dungeon Company production. Thank you for watching. We really appreciate it. If you want to help us grow, make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button and go ahead and leave us a comment down below and share this with your friends. Other ways you can help support the show is by checking out some of our products over on itch.io or drive through RPGs. In addition, you can join our Patreon and get early release access and a chance to ask us any questions that you have. If you want to reach out to us on social media, you can find us on Twitter at BDDC underscore pod, or you can email us at blackdragondungeoncompany at gmail.com. Once again, thanks for watching.